and I'm telling you, it flooded on me, and I wanted nothing more than to get back to Taiwan. I started repenting. I physically started crying, just sobbing in the middle of this office. And you know, you're a foreigner, so people really look at you, you know? And I am crying, I'm repenting, I'm going, I'm sorry, Lord. I go, I was born for Taiwan. This is what you shaped me for. Taiwan is the nation that you have given to me. I said, Lord, I walk back in. This is my decision. I walk back in. Five minutes later, the little lady comes back, and she'd been real snooty, right? And then she looks at me, and I'm, you know, just <laughs> tears screaming down my face. She goes, oh, she goes, it's okay. They said you could go back. <laughs> <laughs> so that night, I was back in a plane to Taiwan. And I want to tell you, from the moment my foot touched down this time, everything changed. I got my own apartment. The people I was meeting with started to come to my apartment. We started to build up a fellowship. Uh, they began to, and they weren't Christians. We started coming, they started coming to the Lord. They started coming under the gospel, and their whole lives would change. They'd go out and tell their friends and families. And now that is just one church of three that we've now built in that nation. Yeah. And it's a voice to the gamers. What I want to tell you is birthing is a difficult process. Ask any mother. Mm -hmm. But the decisions we make when things are difficult is what really is a defining moment in our life. And it can either birth something or it can end up aborting something. You know, and so fortunately the Lord moved in me and I was able to birth. But here's the fun part. See, after birth comes life. And life is the fun part. You know, in John 10.10, 10, this is the scripture I live by. The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Yes. He comes to kill your relationship. Yes, he right. comes to steal your yes. dreams. And he comes to destroy your sense of self-worth. Yes, right. And I'm here to tell you for the gay and lesbian community worldwide in Taiwan, I think the most insidious thing that the enemy does to our people is he steals their sense of self-worth. Yes. And I believe that that's what the Lord is calling us to do is to heal that image of themselves oh, yes. and restore that sense so they reach for higher, they yes. reach for more. Yes. And so the enemy comes to steal, but Jesus says, I come to give them life yes. and to give it a little, no, in abundance yes. that God comes to give life. And so I'm here to tell you, everything the gospel touches brings life, yes. you know? And so, and the Bible is full of it, right? The Bible's always talking about it. It says, you are born again. You are a new creation. You have new life. We get yes. to get, I love it, we get to get do-overs. We're the only religion in the world where Christ gives us a do-over. You know the little etch sketch patch? All our screw-ups are written on that little etch sketch you know? And we like to live by this. And Christ comes along, you know? Complete do-over with a new creation. So consequently, EMI has put life at the center of all our ministries. Every church that we build, every ministry that we do must produce life. And so it's what is preached, it is what is prayed, and it's what is programmed. And we continually come back and we evaluate and we say, is this bringing life? Does this program bring life? And is it, we ask ourselves the question, are people getting better? Are their relationships getting better? Are relationships getting better with their, with their families, with their lovers, with their dating? You know, is there life in their relationships? Is there life in their health? You know, is their health getting better? Not just physical health, because we all know we need physical healing, but is their mental health yes, getting better? Yes. Are they changing their sense of their self-worth and their self-image? You know, so the gospel puts life into everything yes. that it touches. And that includes our careers, that includes our education, yes. that includes our finances, yes. and it concludes our walk with the Lord. Amen. And so what, what this did actually is this uh, brought it home to me with a conversation. I don't know if you can put up a slide. Um, now there should be a girl on it, Anne Pay. I know it's this, the second, yes, there she is. And Pay, that one of the first girls I brought to the Lord when I was actually living out there. But anyway, now I'm back home in America and I, I go back to Taiwan and uh, we go out for coffee together. Now, Aunt Pei is an adorable person, uh, but how many of you are familiar with Winnie the Pooh? 
Mm -hmm. Okay, you don't have to show hands. Okay. <laughs> okay, you know, you are the donkey, right? It's always rain and the sky is falling. We're all gonna die. Okay, MP is Eeyore incarnate. Okay. And so what happens is, so we're in this thing and she's saying, you know, I just hate my job. You know, she's, she actually has quite a good job. She works for a librarian, but she works in the university system. And she wants to stay. She loves being a librarian. But she's been in this one job for almost six years now. And it's about an hour outside of Kaohsiung. So she wants to have a job that's back in the city. But she's just complaining. Oh, I don't like this about my job. I don't like that about my job. And this is happening. That is happening. And she's going, oh. Okay, I'm paid. I said, the Lord desires that you have life in all its fullness. I said, so the Lord wants to give you the job that you desire, the dream of a career that you want. She goes, I'm in the career I want. She goes, I want a better job. I said, and the Lord wants you to have a better job. And this is Anne Pay's answer, always impossible, impossible. Right? I go, it's not impossible. I go, you and me are going to pray. I said, but first you've got to tell me. Now, there are only three universities that she can stay working to stay a librarian in the university system. And I said to her, okay, which one do you want to go to? She goes, I want to go to Winsau. I've always wanted to go to Winsau. Winsau is the top language university in Kaohsiung. So I said, okay, that's what we're going to pray for. So we sat in that cafe and we prayed. And I said, Lord, you have desired that you want to give and pay life in all its fullness. And you are concerned about her career. She needs life in her career. Winsau, open the door for Winsau. She's thinking impossible. And it is true, these jobs do not come up often. Okay. So then, so I talked to her about that, and she said, well, while you're at it, she says, you're always telling me that I have to marry a Christian, that I can only date a Christian. She said, there are only 2% of the population are Christian, and of that 2%, how many are going to be lesbian, right? <laughs> tell me, tell me. She goes, it's impossible. She goes, I don't know, it's not impossible. So I go through the whole rigmarole that God wants to bring life into her relationship, that God has, and she goes, well, so I said to her, we're going to pray about it. And she says, well, I also want a beautiful woman too. <laughs> so we pray about a relationship as well. So we're praying about a relationship. And of course, I have the, I have the luxury that I can see, see you back. And I go back to America. <laughs> okay, a little while later, I get a phone call from Anne Pei. And she tells me that she's got the opportunity to be a librarian at a hospital. Right? This is not her dream. But she says, but it's at least it's in the city of Kaohsiung, so I'm going to pursue it. So she's on her way to the interview. She's halfway there on her scooter when she realizes, oh, I left my ID at home. She has to go back and get her ID. By the time she gets to the interview, it's closed because you have to sit an exam for this. 